Let's Ask Annex. Got a question for us? You head to our website, AnnexWealth.com. You click that Ask button. If we can help, you click the Get Started button. When we get tax questions, we talk to Tanya. Tanya Sinha is Manager of Tax Planning at Annex Wealth Management. And folks, she is so busy, we couldn't even get her in the studio. I had to track her down on her cell phone. How is life, Tanya? How are you? Hi, Danny. Life is great. I love doing taxes, so this is the best part of my life. Did you hear that, folks? <laughs> she says, I love doing taxes. All right, we got a couple of tax questions for you real quick. The first is, what are some red flags that trigger IRS audits? That is a great question during the tax season. We all know that during past few years, tax rates have dropped, but IRS has plans to get those audit rates up. With that, the common red flags would be for self-employed. Business owners who file Schedule C, for them, documentation is the key. They are at high risk, especially if their income is cash-based or if they receive 1099s. People who get 1099s for their income, IRS also gets a copy. So they have a system to match it with your tax return. So if you miss it, they will know and you will get an audit letter. Another would be, again, this is also for business owners. If you put your expenses with rounded numbers, that catches the eye very fast. So make sure you have the receipts because people tend to overstate their expenses. Another thing would be taking higher than average deductions, losses, or credits. But again, if you have proper documentations, then don't be afraid to claim those. Tanya Sinha is manager of tax planning on Ask Annex. Got two questions. Our second is, what is education credit? Can I claim it even if I pay for my kids' college tuition through a 529? Absolutely. And this came up a lot this year also because our clients were giving us 1099Qs form you get when you take the distributions out of 529 plan. But then they were not giving us another form, which is called 1098 T. We need that to take deduction on the tax return. There are two kinds of education tax credits. One is American Opportunity Tax Credits. It's for first four years of college education. And then we have Lifetime Learning Credit. We can take that after we exhaust American Opportunity Tax Credit. Talk to your tax advisor and see if this is a good fit for you. Tanya Sinha, Manager of Tax Planning at Annex Wealth Management. Thank you very much. Thank you, Danny, for having me over. Now in the studio, Sarah Kyle, Wealth Manager at Annex Wealth Management. Hello. Hello, Danny. Matt Morris, the Investment Team Manager and a CFP at Annex Wealth Management. Welcome back. Hey, Danny. Got a couple questions for you guys. First one is from Chris. I'm eight to 10 years away from retirement, active in my company 401k. Does it make sense to switch my 401k contributions to Roth contributions or wait until I'm retired to convert what I have? Well, there are definitely some things to consider. What's your current tax situation now and what do you expect it to be in the future? You know, Roth contributions are made with that after-tax dollars, meaning you pay the taxes up front when you contribute. So this can be beneficial if you are projected to be in a higher bracket in retirement than you are now. On the other hand, if you are in a high-tax bracket now, it may make sense to use pre-tax dollars and make those traditional 401k contributions. And depending on your financial situation and if you have some disposable income, you can always consider doing Roth contributions with after-tax dollars. Or if your income is too high right now, look into doing some backdoor Roths. Some of the things we like to stress is that asset location. Again, remember, we're always talking about asset allocation in the portfolio and making sure you're diversified. But you also need to be tax diversified. So take a look at your asset location mix. You know, we use that three-bucket approach. Tax now, tax later, tax now. Ever. Are all of your retirement assets in that tax later bucket? And if so, you could really have a tax nightmare once you hit that required minimum distribution age. So we'll want to shift some of those assets into that tax later bucket. Most common way is through Roth conversions when your income is low, typically between retirement and RMD age. I want to pick the tax never bucket. <laughs> I Apparently, love the tax never that's, bucket. That's the good one. <laughs> Apparently not. Okay, Matt, got a couple for you. First one's from Phil. Any comment on the survey that reported nearly 60% of institutional investors said they've used red for investment decisions. Yeah, I think initially that number seemed really high to me until I, I kind of sat down and thought about it. I think investors are always looking for different sources of information. And you obviously want to vet all of those sources as a part of a due diligence process. But we don't really use Reddit for that. But, you know, Twitter is a great source for financial information. You know, what you really want to do is find people that you trust, read through what they have, track what they're saying and and how that's been working and what their backgrounds are. Where are they working? What's the purpose of what they're saying? Is it to talk their own book and to talk up investments that they already have? Or is it educational? You know, there's a lot of people that I think provide a lot of great insight. Using different sources to find those people is really helpful. 
Speaking of that, Doug asks, do the commentators on CNBC know what they're talking about, especially someone like Jim Cramer? Yeah, he's certainly the one that, that people point to the most. In fact, there's actually ETFs that track his investment decisions. You can have Long Jim and have the ETF that tracks when he says to buy to, to actually invest in those, or Short Jim to actually go the opposite direction and bet against the things that he's saying. So that's kind of funny to watch. But again, you want to watch what are they saying and why are they saying that? Ultimately, CNBC is trying to sell ad dollars. They're getting, getting people on there that people are going to want to listen to or, or pay attention to. And sometimes those people are there to make bold statements in order to attract their viewers. It's not that different from like ESPN, where you have a lot of talking heads and they might all be making Super Bowl predictions, but who are actually the people that are generally more right than not? And those are the people that I would want to follow. But again, you want to do your due diligence on who they are and what they're trying to get across. Matt Moore is the investment team manager. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Sarah Kyle, wealth manager at Annex Wealth Management. Thank you. You're welcome, Danny. 